Okay, a nice mathematical modeling problem going on here. Um, I have two different solutions to help you out on this, um, two different ways to kind of approach the same problem. So let's read through it, draw a picture, and we'll talk through it together. So we have a steep mountain is inclined 74 degrees from the horizontal and rises to a height of 3,200 feet above the surrounding plain. A cable car is to be installed running from a point 960 feet from the base of the mountain to the top of the mountain. All we want to know is what's the length of the shortest cable. So let's get started in drawing a nice picture to go along with this. So we have a plane, we have a mountain. So this is what my picture is going to look like initially. Um, we're told that our mountain is 3,200 feet high. I'm going to visualize this as being a right angle at the bottom thinking going from the plane straight up until we get 3,200 feet into the air, that'll be the top of the mountain. And the other information we're given is from the base of the mountain, we're gonna go out 960 feet. So from the base out to the end here, and then we're gonna install a nice cable going from there all the way to the very top of this mountain. So as we go going on this, eventually we wanna find the length of this red line, X. Um, two different ways to get going on it. I'm gonna visualize this as, first of all, being a nice right angle, uh, right triangle. So I'm trying to mimic this same triangle that's a right triangle that has this side length of 3,200. And I guess I didn't label before, but we know we have a angle of inclination of 74 degrees. So that's gonna go in that corner. The first way I'm gonna approach this is basically thinking about the second triangle. Hopefully I can draw this okay. Trying to basically find the side lengths and get the information about this triangle, the one on the left-hand side, and eventually find X going on here. Um, to do that, what I want to do is first go ahead and kind of label what we know. Well, we don't know X. We do know the bottom is going to be 960 feet. Um, we would like to know this angle going across here and then the side length over on the right-hand side of this right triangle. Um, the angle is going to be probably the easiest thing to find here um, because this makes a 180 degrees going all the way across here. It's supplemental. So to calculate the angle on the other side, we can do 180 degrees, subtract away the 74 degrees that we do know, and we're gonna get 106 degrees. So basically 106 degrees to go the rest of the way around. So that this makes 180 degrees total. That's the same angle that I have drawn over in our other triangle at the bottom. That's gonna be 106 degrees there as well. All right, next let's work on finding this side length of this red triangle. But to do so, you'll notice that that is the exact same side length as the hypotenuse for our right triangle going on over here. So that hypotenuse, I'm gonna represent it with C for the time being. Let's represent that um, based on this right triangle that we have on the right-hand side in blue. So we can thank Sokotoa. and represent it because the 3200 is gonna be opposite the angle that we know. And the C, the, the side length that we we're trying to find is gonna be the hypotenuse. So when we're looking for the trigonometric ratio that incorporates the opposite and the hypotenuse side, we're thinking sine, hopefully. So we can represent that with sine of 74 degrees is going to be 3200, the opposite, over the hypotenuse, which I've called C for the time being. All right, now we wanna solve this for C, the side length. So first I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by C. So we have C times sine of 74 degrees is gonna equal 3,200. And to get C all by itself, we can divide both sides by sine of 74 degrees. All right, that puts C on one side all by itself. So that represents the hypotenuse of this right triangle, but it, that is the exact same side length as what's on the right-hand side over here. 
So for the time being, I'm going to write 3200 divided by sine of 74 degrees. Um, we could get an approximation to go along with that, but let's keep it as an exact answer for the time being. All right, now that we have um, two of the three side lengths and that angle opposite X in this red triangle down here on the, the bottom, what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the law of cosines. So to use the law of cosines, let's first go ahead and kind of label things. I'm going to call the 106 our alpha angle. This is going to go along with our A. I'm going to call this B the 960. And then this is again going to be our C, the 3200 divided by sine of 74 degrees. Um, so with this version, I'm going to use the top uh, A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC multiplied by the cosine of alpha. And alpha in our case, again, is that 106 degrees. So let's fill in the law of cosines. So in my case, I'm going to put X on the left-hand side just because um, I had labeled it with X before, but um, it's going to be X is equal to 960 quantity squared plus our C in this case is going to be the 3200 divided by sine of 74 degrees. That gets squared. And then we subtract away two times B, which was 960 multiplied by C, which was again, this kind of weird fraction, 3200 divided by sine of 74 degrees multiplied by the cosine of alpha. And alpha in our case is that 106 degrees. Um, and on the left-hand side, I should go ahead and put that was A squared on the left-hand side. So in our case, that's gonna be X squared for the time being. So now we get X squared is equal to, I'm gonna go ahead and put all of the right-hand side into my calculator, making sure that we're in degree mode because it's 106 degrees and 74 degrees. Um, and get an approximation going on here that we get X squared is equal to 13,765,326.31. And yeah, I kept decimal places. To get X all by itself, we're going to get rid of the square by applying a square root to both sides. And then we can say this is going to be approximately 3,000. 710.165267. And that'll be in feet as well. Um, I didn't worry about the positive and negative case here when I applied the square root because we're looking at a real life situation where this is a side length, having a negative value coming out wouldn't make any sense. All right, so that's our solution. Uh, the first solution, the second way to do this is a little bit different, but I think it makes a little bit more sense, especially if we're not as comfortable with the law of cosines. So let's back up here to our original picture. With this original picture, what I could do is if I were to draw a big triangle going all the way around the outside here, let's visualize that triangle um, where we're still trying to find X, same side length, we know we have a big right triangle at this case. So we know one side, we almost know this side at the bottom, but we only know part of it. We know 960, but we don't know this side length at the bottom. So what we can do is again, over on the right hand side where we had uh, this right triangle drawn, this bottom side here is gonna correspond with the bottom side on this right triangle as I've drawn it on the right hand side. So what we can do in this case is try to represent this bottom side um, by using trigonometric ratios again. So in this case, let's go ahead and say, I wanna find, I'll call it A this time around. So represent A, that's going to be the adjacent side of this right triangle. And let's use that 3200 from the opposite. And we wanna, incorporate both the opposite side and the adjacent side. So in this case, thinking Sokoto, I want to use tangent. So I can say that tangent of 74 degrees is going to be our opposite 3200 divided by the adjacent, as I've called it, A. A little bit of solving down here to get A on one side by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by A. And Doing this kind of quickly, I'm going to divide both sides by tangent 
of 74 degrees. That'll isolate A on one side by itself, and we can say that's 3200 divided by tangent of 74 degrees. All right, so kind of putting it over into our triangle over here, we can say the rest of the side length at the bottom can be represented by 3200 divided by tangent of 74 degrees. All right, so now thinking about this white triangle over on the left-hand side, we wanna find X, the hypotenuse. We know one side length here and we've represented the other side length on the bottom. What we wanna do is add these two pieces together to get the entire bottom side of this triangle. So let's go back to the Pythagorean theorem. So we wanna be thinking a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And let's try to, to fill in based on that triangle that we had up above. So I'm gonna call this, I guess I'm reusing a's and b's whatnot. I'm gonna say a goes with 3,200, b is gonna be the entire bottom. So 960 plus 3,200 divided by tangent of 74 degrees is gonna be my b. And then x is gonna go for c in the Pythagorean theorem this time around. So again, 3,200 was the height. We're gonna square that. Plus, now we need to represent that entire bottom of that white triangle up above. So remember that was 960 plus 3,200 divided by the tangent of 74 degrees. That gets squared in the bottom, the B side here gets squared, is gonna equal our C side, which again, I had called it X up above initially. So I'm gonna go back to X. Make sure that makes sense, 3,200, the height of our big right triangle, and then the base we represented with 960 plus 3,200 divided by tangent of 74 degrees was the entire bottom of this big right triangle in white. C was represented by X. All right, the only thing that remains is to get X on one side all by itself. So to get rid of that square, we're gonna apply a square root to both sides. So as we do that, we're gonna get X isolated by itself. Again, we're not worried about the positive and negative case because X is a real life distance. So it only makes sense if that is non-negative. And again, if you put this all in your calculator, you have to be a little bit careful with parentheses. In fact, I forgot a set of parentheses after my 74 degrees here. Um, we're gonna get 3,710.165267. And again, that'll be in feet. All right, the exact same answer that we got doing it using the law of cosines, but I think maybe a little bit easier to wrap our heads around if all we have to do is represent that other bottom side and then use the Pythagorean theorem. I think we're all a little bit more comfortable utilizing the Pythagorean theorem than the law of cosines. So I hope this helps out. Good luck as you're working on mathematical modeling. Always draw that picture. It really does help out to wrap your head around what the situation is. Good luck.